All right, welcome back. Fifth grade, starting to read chapter three today. If you remember over here on uh, chapter two as it ended, uh, Seth was uh, been grumbling about how he can't be a carpenter, he has to be a doctor because that's what his dad wants. Well, at the end of chapter two, he gets to uh, help out on a, on a carpentry crew and so he's all excited, like, I'll show you, Dad, I can, I can, I'm a better carpenter than a doctor. And that's how the chapter two ended. Let's see how, how chapter three goes. Is this too close? Yeah, so we can make this work. <clears throat> Papa and Uncle Nate disappeared into the study, and I sat outside to watch for Ben. I finally saw him walking down Avenue L, his hair dripping with sweat, his face blotchy red from the heat. I surprised him as he came around the corner, and he let out a whoop. Seth, he bellowed, shaking my hand and slapping me on the shoulder. Glad you finally made it. I shrugged and grinned back at him. Yeah, me too. Things are looking up. Uncle Nate found me a job. He pulled a handkerchief from the back, his back pocket and wiped his sweaty face. Not as a delivery boy, I hope. Today I hauled two hundred dollars worth of groceries in this heat. Can you believe it? Two hundred. That's two hundred dollars in, in nineteen hundred, which should probably be like a thousand dollars worth of groceries today. I let out a low whistle. Then I guess you'll be too tired to go to the beach later, huh? He laughed. The beach is what we live for around here. We finished an early supper of fried chicken, okra, and cantaloupe. Okay. Uh, but we couldn't leave till all the chores were done. The younger boys got stuck washing dishes for once, or and for once, I found myself sitting with the grown-ups. I shot Matt a wide grin, and he stuck out his tongue. As the sun slid toward the west, I noticed more and more people promenading along the streets. Some strolled as if they had no destination in mind, but most poured south, toward the beach, with an eager, almost impatient gait. A gait is how you're walking, like they're walking really quickly. I leaned against the rail with Ben, watching the parade, and the, little, and the girl I'd seen earlier came bouncing down her steps. She wore a white, wide-brimmed straw hat and carried a small bundle. I nudged Ben. Who's that? He called to her, and she waved. Ella Rose Covington. Oops, there we go. He said, 16. Her mother died last year, and now she lives alone with her father. Goes to Ursuline Academy. He tossed me a sly grin. Too bad she won't be going to public school like you. Yeah, I muttered, too bad. Andy and Will burst through the screen door, followed by Matt and Lucas. We're finished, Ma, uh, Will said. Can we go? The four boys waited, eyes fixed on Aunt Julia's face. Oops, sorry about that. Bare feet twitching, but she pretended not to notice. Ma, Andy whined, his freckled face puckered in exasperation. Aunt Julia laughed. You can go ahead of us if you agree to stay within the first ropes. But... She said, holding up her uh, finger. If I find out any of you disobeyed, there'll be no more swimming until school starts. Have I made myself clear? Yes, ma'am. Andy and Will raced for the steps. Lucas tossed a quick thank you over his shoulder and scrambled after them. Matt, however, leaned down and gave Aunt Julia a kiss on the cheek. I'll make sure they stay inside the ropes, he whispered. She watched him go, then turned to Mama. That Matt is one sweet boy, Eliza. Uh, you must be very proud of him. It nearly made me puke. Matt was born knowing which side of his bread to butter, and he did it well. Uh, when you see this, another 1900 expression, uh, butter and the bread, when you say, I know which side the butter, he knows to be nice to the parents and the adults, and they love it. Ben and I left our lagging parents behind to follow us as best they could and headed east down Avenue N. I was glad to get away. 
I never knew when Mama might shove Kate at me again. We, uh, we passed the Garten Veren and its croquet greens and tennis courts, its clubhouse and bowling alleys, and the bright octagon-shaped dancing pavilion tiered like a massive wedding cake. In the next block, Ben pointed out the Ursuline Convent, and beyond that, Ursuline Academy, where the blonde girl, blonde-headed girl, down the street would go. Let's see, here we go. Her classes would start next week. But that's a whole month earlier than public schools, I said. I bet she's not happy about that. What? You mean not looking forward to school? Are you kidding? Ben grinned and shrugged. Right now, I can't think of much else. I shook my head in disbelief. You're really going to be a doctor, huh? Live a life filled with blood and guts? He tossed me a surprised look. Papa told me you were planning to go into medicine yourself. Did he get it wrong? Yeah, he did. For sure. My father is the one planning that career. I'm going to be a carpenter. Ben raised an eyebrow and gave a slow nod. You're in a fix then, aren't you? According to Papa, Uncle Thomas has a powerful stubborn streak. Sounds like you'll need all the luck you can get to squirm out of this one. I laughed, but he was dead right. And we turned south on 24th Street and joined a stream of families walking to the great bathhouses built on pilings out of the water. Remember, pilings are like telephone poles pounded into the sand to make the buildings be up above the ocean waves. The Pagoda Company's twin buildings lay just ahead. Their sloping roofs of striped canvas made them look like two giant circus tents staked out in the gulf, then a bathhouse. As, as we neared the beach, I saw Murdoch's, too, and beyond that, the three-story Olympia. Voices rose and fell on the wind, and I turned east toward what must have been ten blocks of ramshackle buildings. If a building is ramshackle, it's not very nice. It's quickly thrown together, more of a shack. That's the midway, Ben said, pulling me in for a closer look. The air sizzled with frying clams and frankfurters and rang with shouts from swimmers and cries from excited gulls. Uh, the, the author, uh, Inhale, does a great job of painting, the, the uh, setting the scene. And this is like a carnival-like scene. The air is full of frying food and hot dogs and lots of people happy, swimming, crying. This is like a beautiful place to be right now. Um, merchants hawked seashells and saltwater taffy, cupie pie dolls and satin uh, pillows. Stay awake here. All right. Where am I? Cupie pie, cupie pie dolls and satin pillows and bellowed invitations to step right up. We walked past swimmers with beach balls tucked under their arms, lined up next to people in street clothes, waiting for a chance at the Penny Arcades. And farther down the beach, I spotted, sorry, and farther down the beach, I spotted a trestle that stretched out over the surf and back again. Remember, a trestle is like that wooden bridge by Island Park. This one kind of goes out into the, to the water and then loops back in so you can ride a train out over the ocean. Trolleys go out over the water? Sure. Some people want to experience uh, the gulf high and dry, he grinned. Not everyone's as brave as we are. The way the beach looked today, I couldn't imagine there'd be any, uh, anyone left in town to take the trolley. It seemed uh, most, of, get, most all of Galveston was here in this evening, bathing, bicycling, or just driving carriages across the crisp, smooth sand. We chose the pagoda for changing into our swimsuits. And took our, took their, rather, long boardwalk that started at the end of 24th Street. The, the steps took us high above the beach, and once out over the surf, I stopped to look down at the crowds. Oops, sorry. 
down at the crowds, gathered around ropes and balanced pilings. They jumped waves in dark wool bathing suits, looking more like fleas on a stray dog's ear than swimmers. All except one. Hmm, which one could that be? I leaned out over the weathered handrail, spotted white with gulls, and tried to get a better look. My stomach fluttered, then lurched hard. Think about this, fifth grade. When your stomach flutters when you see someone, what's going on? What emotions are in your head? It was the girl with the sun-bright hair. At least, it looked like her. By the time I glanced up again, Ben was gone, and I had to hurry to catch up. I do believe, fifth grade, that we have found ourselves another story with a theme of love. How exciting. Let's see here. When we'd changed and finally gotten back to the beach, I saw Mama and waved. She looked a bit unsure of herself as she waved back at me from the door of a brightly painted portable bathhouse. So this bathhouse is essentially like a tent place where you can go change. If you go to a Darien Lake, like they have locker rooms today where you go change uh, into your bat, bat, swim clothes and such. And that's what this bathhouse is about back in 1900. A parade uh, of these two-wheeled wagons lined the beach, waiting to be rolled out into the water a short way and hauled back in by horses. A convenience for swimmers who wanted to keep sand out of their stockings and shoes. I had, let's see here, I had to laugh thinking of Mama inside gripping the walls while the concierge pushed her toward the surf. So if you wanted to get dressed, you go swimming, and then when you're done swimming, you would kind of wave to the bathhouse guy, he would back his cart into the water, you climb in, get changed, and you wouldn't get sand in your shoes, which was something people were willing to pay a little money for back then. While Ben and I bobbed in the water and rode the waves, I watched for the yellow-haired girl. I kept, let's see here, I kept an eye on the warm surf around the pagoda and under the splashy lettering painted across the side of the building where I'd last seen her. A ride on the Katy is like a drive on the beach. Uh, the sign for the MK&T Railway declared. I must have read those words a hundred times before the sky settled into layers of pink and purple, and I had to accept that I'd missed her. I hauled my heavy uh, limbs from the surf, feeling like a, a dunce for letting her tangle up my thoughts the way she had. I didn't even know her and probably never would. Look at that. His brain is all befuddled with a sun-colored hair girl. Ben and I changed back into our street clothes while sunset colors slid away. By the time we started home, there was nothing left but twinkling silver on a black umbrella sky. The electric lamps perched high on tall pilings uh, out in the surf flickered on, and I heard cheers from late-night swimmers. Where was I? Right there. Skinny dippers, Ben said, grinning. They swim just beyond the light. Sometimes as many as 200 men, naked as the day they were born. Oh my. I shook my head and laughed. It was hard to imagine. We took 24th Street back to Avenue N, where nightfall had transformed the Garten Varenne into something out of one of Kate's fairy tales. Electric light spilled across the grounds, uh, gilding leaves and blossoms and ladies' white lace gowns. If something is gilded, it's turned golden. The old lights back then had a yellowy glow about them. The open dancing pavilion sparkled through the trees at a great, like a great Chinese lantern. I stopped to listen uh, to the band to the way the music mingled with the sounds of surf and the soft crash of bowling pins, and I might have stayed far longer if Ben hadn't pulled me away. But it was late, and tomorrow I, I'd be only three days away from my future. So he's got girls on his mind and carpentry on his mind. Let's see what happens next time we get together in Chapter 4. Thanks for listening with me, guys.